Wanky wanky. Eggs and bacon. You know what? I don't like. Coming back to the same motherfucking job twice. I agree. We are where we were. We are where we were. In our last video, which was two and a half weeks ago, <coughs> we did a, a board change to a new SBS board. Mwah! Mm -hmm. Sorry. Thank you. Mwah. Uh, no one's living here. The gentleman was moving out whilst we were here. Yeah. Uh, we undertook an ERCR three and a half weeks ago. Did the board change two and a half weeks ago. The guys moved out, although he still had stuff here and was decorating. It was only yesterday he handed over the keys. Uh, and as he handed over the keys, he called me to say, oh, the lights have tripped off and I can't get them back on. So that's interesting, isn't it? Or not, as it may not be. You can see we're in the darkness. It's the, the basement lights have tripped off. And we were like, well, I was like, oh, oh, come on now, come on. We did all of the testing and stuff. To be fair, the IR was low-ish on that circuit, even when we did the board change. Still a pass, but not by a huge amount. So it was always something where we said to the homeowner, look, the insulation resistance of this circuit isn't great, but at the moment it is a pass, but things may change in the future. And indeed they have, although we weren't quite expecting it to change as quickly as this, yeah, <laughs> after a couple of weeks. Because that IR reading might have been a bit pants for hate while. I'm very pleased, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned this on video, I lost my James Beck torch. I know you did. My superior, what are these, Unilite? Superior to? Unilite to what? IL175R, and I just got the... The version that a man with a small penis would have. Because <laughs> he has to compensate. Some of us don't have to compensate and can go with the small one. This is the excellent James Beck torch that he sent me. Very kind of him too. Uh, yes, the Unilite IL-175R. I don't know what yours is. What yours would be the... Uh, Take your finger uh, off the light. And yeah, uh, 375R. So anyway, big willy competition aside, <laughs> which I would win. Uh, I lost this... For 14 weeks, and I thought, oh shit, I've left it on a site. I knew which site it was on. It was one miles away out in the sticks. It's like, no, I can't even just sort of go there again very easily. It's out off our usual beaten path. And I don't know where it would be even then, because it was a big place, that wasn't it? Yeah. If you remember it. Do you remember it? You've got a fucking clue, have you? you got a fucking clue, twat. Okay. And then uh, I was fishing around in the driver's seat of the old tranny, a couple of weeks ago and lo and behold the old tranny did moan a bit there it was yes this is it you, you stick your fingers in the old tranny and there you go anyway rcbo trip so i guess our ir is nosedived if you'd like to take the camera mr marsh well, in fact, let's stop recording there and uh, i'll get the tester a job for the metrel mi3125 look at that it's even got a, a metrol Holder. Metro look. That's it. <laughs> the Metro look. Oh, fucking hell. Fault finding. The drawing fault finding is you never know how long it's going to take to find the fault, so it kind of screws up how you can um, book your day. Uh, we've got other things that we ought to be doing today, but we don't know if we're going to find this in 10 minutes or if it's going to take us the rest of the day. That should be off, really, shouldn't it? Right. Line and neutral, testing to earth, and what we expect to see here, if it's troubling the RCD, is... Uh, fucking the camera operator here, he's fucking useless. I've just fucking gone to it, haven't I? It, it, it's probably either a resistive fault... Well, let's check for a resistive fault. Have we got any continuity there? No, we haven't. Or it's a fault where the res insulation resistance is so pants that it just breaks down as soon as an EMF Whoa, is applied. This is a very expensive tester right. that isn't ours. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Probably ought not to break. I'll tell you, I could put the metal strap over the metal hook, and then that can act as a bit of a lifeline if the metal decides to do a swan dive. Genius! Right, IR, 250 volts. Oh, that's not good. Computer Ooh. says no, Ooh. get to nine volts and it bombs out. So something has changed in the last two and a half weeks. 
What has changed? Check which one it is, whether it's line or neutral. Fuck's sake. Come on, really? Seriously, Come on, it doesn't really matter, does it? It's a bit professional, isn't it? Looking font to font. Yeah, I know. No, all right, no, all right, all right. Let's now. Nigel wants to spend longer here than we need to. Let's Look, do you're that. You're going to lose that metro. Single test, I say, I right, so go to go, go. Yes. So that's on line. If there's uh, any loads connected, then we're going to read about the same on neutral anyway. No. And of course, we've got. Uh, no, they are things. all yeah. connected, aren't they? That's even worse. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, yes, because there's things like light bulbs in circuit and that sort of stuff, we are going to read a bad reading. The good news is there's no down lights. Uh, it's all move. single fittings. Now the guy said that it tripped off after he used the bathroom yesterday. Maybe it was a particularly whiffy stink. There's not a lot to go wrong really. Oh, they, have been, they have been decorating. Uh, and in a way that's not great. I think the tenant just thought, I'll get my mate in to do some decorating before I bugger off. But there's not going to be a lot to see in these sort of roses. Unless we've got Did some... Did a nick somewhere? Nicks or crushed cores. In our last video, Nigel found a, a nick in the wiring on the socket circuit which had been caught by an earth screw hence the bad reading there i think our best bet is to perhaps get all these pulled down and the wires separated out a bit to see if it makes any difference we've got a fan in here cord switch. It's always fun doing this by torch. Like, what do you think about head torches, Nigel? I never got on with head torches. I quite like a head torch, but the problem is battery life versus brightness. I can see how a head torch would have any I find head torches inferior battery a, life. Have a way you can't hold a torch so easily, like with a switch, a wall switch in the dark. Do you want to See inside it to get your bloody accessory screws back in. Head torch helps loads. The good news is, again, because we haven't got down lights, it means that hopefully all the junction positions are right here. In which case, we can potentially break this circuit down. You said these shades weren't on last time, so someone's... Yeah, someone's put them on in a weird way. Yeah, I know. Charming. Show them what we found on the boiler, Nigel. Oh, don't you just love this boiler work? From afar, you can see... Hang on, let me get a torch on. Allow me. You can see our boiler here, yes. Now let's have a look at how they've put it in a cupboard of sorts. And... Well, they've grouted it Plastered in, haven't they? or grouted it in. You can see this is actually... Some gas twat's going to turn up and be very impressed by that. Uh, now, there's obviously some kind of junction for these lights, because each of these only has one cable. Uh, is that at the switch? No, I know that's not the switch, because I replaced that switch. Right, okay. Single down. Yeah. Oh dear. Negative. I just I say there's only one left. That's still this one. <sighs> Nothing to see there. Right. Well, what are we going to do about this, Mr. Marsh? We're going to start disassembling this circuit. Yeah. Presumably, <laughs> logic would say that it bounces from room to room. Yeah. <laughs> But the, the problem with this room is, of course, there is a junction here. Yeah, this is the problematic. And area. it's hiding above the ceiling. Okay. Then I guess we'd better start breaking it down. You know it. 
we've just connected this light in the hall, which has three cables coming off it. Uh, one's presumably a feed in, the other two are presumably feed out. I don't know which is which, but I think it's likely that one's going that way and one's going to the bathroom. The pain in the arse of this is working in the dark. It'd be right if we could put the lights on. Well, hey, you see? It worked! The old safety uh, strap. Oh, Jesus H. Christ. Jesus Christ. Fuck's sake. These metal hooks are just slightly far apart, aren't they? Slightly too far apart. Right, we're reading good at the board. Because we know that it's reading good from the board. So one of these will be a feedback to the board. All right, so go. Easy enough for us to figure out which is the feedback to the board. We can just do continuity tests on that. So that cable is good. I'm sorry about the camera operator. He's a child. That one's good. It's got to be this one then, hasn't it, Mr. Marsh? It's got to be. It's just got to be. That one. There you go. Oh, Start yes. getting the error message. The error message says, oh, I'm not sure about this. And sure enough, that's bad. Um, so, I guess we don't connect that one. Reconnect the other two. Power up. You genius. <laughs> See what works. All but our duff cable have been... Oh. Don't forget the safety strap. I'm on it. All but our duff cable have been reconnected. So we should get good reading back at the board. It's interesting, I had a, a message from uh, an American spark who says they don't really use IR testers over there. I don't know they trace GFCI faults without IR testing. Mm -hmm. If you're a Yankee Doodle Spark, do let us know. Good in the hood, back at the board. Yeah. Uh, where's that hop up? Let's get that reconnected. Worst case scenario is the kitchen because that goes to some hidden junction that we can't get to. Yeah. Best case scenario is the shaver light in the bathroom. Oh. Because either that would be a faulty appliance we can replace or faulty wiring we can just discount and we'll have to do without. Uh, the intermediate option is the bathroom light, but we don't really want to go there either. So uh, let's find out. I suppose I've got light bulbs out everywhere, haven't I? Let there be light. That's all. Ah, oh, shit. Took bathroom. Nothing at the shaver socket. Nothing at the bathroom lights. Presumably the kitchen works. Yeah, okay, right. Bathroom it is then. A bad feed into the bathroom. Well, what we've got here is a feed in, which is coming from the hall, because we can just verify that comes into here. We've got a three core going out to a fan position. Aye. We don't think that's at fault, because the isolator was off over there and the three core is just in this trunking. Something would have to have gone wrong inside the trunking for that to happen. Pretty unlikely. Yeah. And then we've got a feed out <coughs> to the shaver point. If you put your, we're going to use the, what is that, the TIS845 without the GS38Ns. Moaned about that in another video. If you see that between line and neutral, we'll figure out which is our feed to that monstrositoire. Give us a shot. Nothing there. Okay, that's our shaver. So, we've basically got this fault down to three positions, one of which we're visually discounting the fan position. Yes. Therefore, our fault is either between here and the hallway, yep. or between here and the shaver. Let's hope it's that. Let's hope it's that. 
uh, why that cable should suddenly have failed in the last two and a half weeks, I don't know. But let's get oh, yeah. the Metrol on it. Oh, yeah. Shall I take that off you? you take that off me. I'll get the Metrol. You grab the Metrol and we'll see which report's bad. Don't forget to make sure you angle the tester toward the camera. I know you're... Oh, well, I've got to push me buttons first. A bit of an asshole when it comes Stop pushing to more. showing the beloved viewers what's actually going on here. This is the feed cable in from the hall. Right. If it's thinking about it, it's going to be good. It is good. Excellent. I mean, 20 is good, isn't it? 20 is good. I know you have trouble with mathematics. We found that out in the previous video where your mind was blown by the fact that numbers don't have to be whole. <laughs> no, no, it's not that. Not that, no. You can get infinitely small there. But I am going to go into it. <laughs> infinitely small. We're not talking about your penis here, Nigel. Right, okay. Yes, our fault. Oh, yes. We our got fault. the warning. Is on that cable going out to there. Right, if you would hold that, I'll remove the shaver. And we'll st I know it's a fault to earth, but I've got to check in. Yeah, let me, um, let me get the camera and we'll have a closer look at that before you disturb it with your monkeyness. Before? Before. You could kind of just get on with it. What we have here, well, you can get on with it now. I'm putting the camera in. It's a class two device, so there's no, there's no earthing for it to go faulty to unless. There yeah. we go, let's get it off. We do have a cable crush on it, a very... Yeah, very the only way that would be our problem... I know. ...is if it's crushed in contact with a metal screw going into a wall, and if the wall is wow. damp... Yes, and that has been crushed there, so... Uh, and we're getting true. some... We, we, uh, we never actually made a video about it. We had a very interesting job in 2018. We certainly did. Uh, which I might incorporate into this video, because we had a cable in the wall, if I remember rightly. Yes, that had just been cut Someone off. had chopped off, yeah. It was an old immersion circuit. Some idiot just chopped it off, left it buried in the wall. The wall had got damp, and we got called out because every time the homeowner used the bath taps, they were getting a shot, and it was because the metal pipe for the bath tap was passing through this damp wall, which was being made live. The wall itself failed an IR test. If you put your probes into the wall, into yes. the plaster of the wall, it failed an IR test. <laughs> uh, and we were kind of recorded that on the mobile phones back in 2018 yeah. when we weren't really doing YouTube stuff so much. And... Hello, it's David and Nigel, and today we've got an interesting fault that we are looking at on their customer premises. And the reported fault is that the client is getting a shock whenever she uses the shower, and we can see on the tester here that we've got 180 odd volts between the taps and the shower hose which is interesting. What's more interesting is if I take this off the tap and put it onto something like the uh, shower rail, we also have the same voltage. And even indeed, if I go and put it onto one of the other taps there, same voltage again. However, uh, obviously the, um, the rail itself is completely separate from any electrical services including bonded parts and the taps are fed by plastic pipes. These pipes on the wall here are plastic so they are also completely separate from any bonded parts. So uh, what on earth is causing this voltage? We have our pipes going through to the, uh, the shower side and we also have this, uh, this curious cable here which is live. We have uh, bleeped that out. Now, if I take my probe and put one end onto what we know is to be an earth part, which is the shower pipe going in, and then put it into any point on the wall here, and you can see the wall's pretty crumbly, and push it in, you can see that it's actually the wall itself which is live. So anything that's screwed into that wall, uh, including screws, feeding, taps and uh, rail uprights and that sort of thing, becomes live with respect to the earth metalwork. And the reason for that is because this wall is damp, and this circuit here that's been cut off somewhere has been compromised. Uh, screws gone through it, we think, or something like that. And it's actually causing this, this whole wall to be live and all these surfaces that are attached to it, which is uh, pretty interesting. And uh, we can prove it's live, uh, or we can prove that it's got continuity uh, by doing an insulation resistance test on it. All right, we've taken the power off now, so this wall should be quite safe to touch and it, it does feel a bit damp in places. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do an IR test at 500 volts. I'm going to just shove my probes into two random points on this wall and 
hit test and you can see it's an insulation resistance failure so there you go we actually have an IR failure of part of the fabric of the building that's um, it's causing this electrical shock risk so what we're gonna have to do now is to um, decommission this circuit which as you can see isn't doing anything someone's just rather me messily chopped it off there so we'll take that out of service and we'll double check the bonding and make sure everything's okay again and uh, hopefully they'll be able to have a shower now without killing themselves which is always a plus so here we are at the source of the installation, a 16th edition board. Uh, this is the circuit we're playing with here. It's labelled as water heater and it obviously used to serve an immersion in that cupboard that's now been, uh, now been taken out and had the cable messily chopped off. Uh, this board dates back to around the millennium. We can see actually there's a sticker on there saying uh, date of last inspection was 2002, which is probably when this was put in. There's uh, an NICIC logo on there, but nothing to identify who actually inspected it, which is a bit crap. And next data recommended next inspection, uh, you obviously put 10 years on it because I've said 2012. So obviously this is a few years past its re-inspection date and being a rental property to save yourself from uh, any legal shenanigans as a landlord, then you should get it inspected at least every five years or um, it's recommended on a change of tenancy as well. So uh, this ought to be re-inspected uh, as soon as possible. I notice it's had PV installed more recently, although that is on a separate board. So we're going to uh, disconnect that circuit now to make it safe and we're also going to check the bonding and then hopefully uh, we'll be done here. Right, give that another test and it's disconnected. I think it's going to be the same, but... It's worth. Yeah. 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 Okay. So we have a bad cable between here and yonder. Yes. Any sign of any problems at that point? It's funny how, again, you know, that this has just manifest itself. It was the IR wasn't great before. It was I can't remember what it was, but it was. Yeah, less than 10 mega ohm nothing which is a low pass but for that to suddenly collapse it feels damp in here doesn't it it does we Not are the walls in a basement and I'm it is a muggy day the heat wave has finally broken it did rain heavily last night but this trip fault was reported yesterday before the rain hit yeah. while it was still hot and it's been hot for a good couple of weeks hasn't it proper hot yeah plus 30 celsius hot so this isn't sort of damp related one of the time i've seen a cable fail was as a result of subsidence i got called out during the first lockdown to a job where the cable in the wall had failed was causing it to trip and it was it was a, a spur going to a fridge fed from a junction floor above so i narrowed down where the fault was and that to disconnect that cable basically and feed the fridge from something else because um, it wasn't fixable without digging out the wall. Or did I dig out the wall? I think I did dig out the wall actually and replace the cable. Yes, that's what I did. But I suppose the good news here is that we can simply chop this off. Yeah. Reconnect the rest of this nonsense. Any chance he's shining a motherfucking torch up here? I really need to replace you with somebody more useful, Nigel. Well, I was just raving out at you waffling at that camera. I don't know if we'll ever make anything of this particular video. It's all been a bit... A bit boring. I don't know. A bit poo and wee, really, isn't it? Speaking of which, I need a piss. Let's get this back together and see what happens. Got that uh, lamp holder. It's on the toilet. That's not the toilet. I know, I'm picking it all of you. Cock monkey. <laughs> Fucking hell. I keep forgetting.
forgetting to bring glasses on there. I can't see anything anymore. Not close up anyway. Mind you, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which wire goes. Where does it? Can you see that? Think like a plumber. Just shove the wires anywhere. We had a job last week where uh, it's someone we know as well. They needed an electrician for their kitchen. Can you can you come and help us? The electricians let us down at the last minute, and we're getting our kitchen. We know our kitchen first fixed. Right. So I was like, hmm, I wonder why they've got someone else in when they know us. Turned out what had actually happened was they got the plumber who's also a kitchen fitter, who's also a Builder. an electrician yeah. <laughs> to come in. And he's taken one look at the wiring and gone, fucking hell, I've bit enough one I can chew here. <laughs> and distanced himself from it. It was a bit of a nightmare though, wasn't it, to look at? It was to look at, yeah, but what if... So, Kings like us who knew what know what we're doing. Wanking. At least who pretend we know what we're doing. We got them sorted out in a couple of days, didn't we? With uh... yeah, it wasn't much fun. No, it wasn't. Brick breaking on a hot day. Very hot day. But you know, if you're going to get a uh, a plumber or a fitter to do your sparking for you. Okay, got the uh, circuit back together again. Oh, Jesus. Try not to break the metal that's not ours. We've got it, we've only got one end. Do, 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 do. Oh, wrong one. I say, I say, go. Give me good news, baby. Lovely. When we did the ICR, as I say, this circuit gave us a low pass, which is enough to say, right, well, we can undertake the board change and it ought not to cause any trouble, mate, but it's something that's going to cause a problem in the future. But we didn't break it down any further than that. We just identified that the circuit had a poor IR without, I'm just going to, I'll have to talk these up in a minute, but I'm just going to pop them for the moment. We just identified the circuit had a poor IR without breaking down exactly where that poor IR was coming from at the time. Light bulbs would help. However, now, now that we've identified that it's the feed to the shaver that's bad, we can um, Dead ball. You broke it. The lamp's gone. Let's get another lamp. Now that we've um, identified that it's a duff cable to the shaver, we've got the shaver out, the IR is off the scale, over 200 mega ohms on the metro range. So hopefully, freaking hell. Where's it gone? Remember that's not a stretch. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. That ought to be okay. The fan ought to have power. Studs indeed. This ought not to have any power. You just cut that off and say, sorry mate, you've got no shaver unless you want us to run a new cable somewhere. That works. <coughs> and then yes, the kitchen works as well. Super darling. So fault found. Let's get this back together and then you can suck me off. Yeah, that's what I'd love to David. Let's get it back together. Got my gear. And then you can stick it in my gob. <laughs> Right, we should be back in business. Oh. That stubby little nut was our offensive table. Yes, as I say, interesting that it should suddenly have failed since a couple of weeks ago. But I'm sure they're not that precious about the shaver socket. 
Well, it's a rental. So if, well, it's an empty rental, so the next tenant won't even know there was a shaver's locket there, apart from some screw holes on the wall. But everything else is tickety-boo, as they say. You know who says that? You. Nobody else, I imagine. It's just not the done thing. What is a tickety-boo? I'm sure I don't know. I didn't take too long, an hour or so. And that's with us messing about with the camera. Uh, so yes, IR fault like that. Let's break it down if you can, if you have junction positions. We were quite fortunate we did here. We are quite fortunate it's not in this room because there's no junction position in here. And uh, get your tester to test at various points. Yeah. And hopefully you can wing wire it, yeah. as they say. Um, I guess we have to fuck off now to the next one. I'll tell you what, that's a cracking cup of coffee. It is a good cup of coffee, but is it worth the extra money? It is a very good cup of coffee. The machine at the shop's out of order, so we've gone to the new coffee shop over there, and uh, it's a rather more expensive, but that is a good cup of coffee. It is, that's where you were, if you saw the previous video, uh, that's where the jackhammers were. Kangos. Would you take that cup of coffee up your ass? What, like an enema? Yeah, you would. No. Was that an interesting video? There's, the only interesting thing about that video, perhaps, one might say, is the segment where we talked about, uh, that we filmed in 2018 and then we did do a video about where someone was getting a zap off the bathroom tap. Yeah. It's a, a kind of a that shame was. that we didn't make more of that video at the time because that was a very yeah. interesting fault. I remember when we stuck the non-contact up to that and it just beeped all over that wall. On to the buy me a stogie list for this week. Oh. Nigel, would you like to take number one? <sighs> Ah, number one is GR Electrical RH17. Who is a whore. He is a whore. And has contributed many times. And uh, he suggests that you change that for chewing tobacco. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll have to buy you a bucket, a metal one. <laughs> yeah, no, no. It's the, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll just stick with these cigars to try and finish them myself off. Now we have um, an honorary virgin. My apologies to Silver Moon Goddess, yes. who uh, made two contributions, one after another, and yep. was elevated immediately to the whores list, and never got to experience time as a virgin. But rest assured, uh, we are making you an honorary virgin this yes, time, yes. and I'm sorry that you are the second person to report the buy me a coffee thing isn't displaying your name. I don't know why that is because anonymous mark always had trouble with that <laughs> and now silver moon goddess also does so thank you for your contribution thank you please accept this virginity <laughs> as a token <laughs> of our <laughs> thanks for your contribution okay and then we've got another whore andy hills another common whore one that's been here so many times before common whore <laughs> good old andy hills and uh, he's he suggests that our quiet spot wasn't so quiet, which is true, because it, they were working yeah. on this bewitched coffee shop. It is all opening up a little bit, isn't it? It is. And it is. yes, uh, we've had some people sitting sort of around us as well at previous times who were... Uh, yakking. Yakking. Who may be a bit, a bit chavvy for our taste as well. <laughs> this is Leamington Spa. Did this you know? isn't Bedworth, for goodness sake. <laughs> Who else we got here? Oh, a new virgin, Dutch Robert. Dutch Robert. I don't know what makes him Dutch. Perhaps he really is Dutch, or perhaps maybe that's, maybe uh, he just likes a lot of Dutch product. Maybe I don't know. <coughs> maybe he wears clogs. Uh, but he wants us to give a shout out to his wife Anna, who he says is also a fan of the channel. I doubt that. Well, we're hello, not, Anna. We're not one to attract the ladies. We're not, but just in case. Generally, well. Hello, Anna. I, I think if, if if we got rid of Nige off the channel, we perhaps would. Now, oh, Jamie Blatant. There you go. There's a virgin boy. Jamie Blatant of the Information Blatant Torpedo virgin. channel, who has made a contribution for my use of the C word in the last video. Well, you are a complete and total cunt. What can I say? 
not just that C word, but the cigar word as well. Ah, which is actually right. Right. <laughs> but it, no, no, no. Shows where my where he, my mind no, is. It was for both. It was for both the C bombing and the cigaring. Uh, he, he approves and made a, a stogie contribution. So thank you, Jamie. Uh, and you can catch Jamie on the Information Torpedo uh, YouTube channel, where if you're a fan of loudmouth, sweary, Sparky is putting the world to rights. Well, you don't get any more loud and sweary than our man Jamie. He's on Twitter as well, should you be so inclined. Uh, Chris Dancer. Chris Dancer. Another whore and a regular contributor who wants uh, to see some videos regarding things like cost calculations, energy storage, that sort of stuff, which is becoming ever more relevant you see, with the horrendous cost of electricity. He's seeing into your mind because... Uh, it's yeah. a dreadful, dark place in there. But Finney should mention that because, as Nigel knows, a video about energy efficiency and use is actually in the works right now and it is. ought to be out it's being worked on. the only thing i'm waiting for is the announcement for the um, uh, october price cap which i think comes That's out at the end thing. of this month yeah soon and then i'll find out exactly how much my pants are being pulled down by my yes device. yes we're all going to be washing in cold water and uh shivering in blankets this uh, coming year. I'm afraid so. The last name to read out is uh, Matthew J. Beddo, who has left no message. So, contribution, oh. but no message. Thank you, Matthew. Not Matthew. I'm sorry he had nothing to say. <laughs> Not even a stick this, lads, or uh, yeah. I hate you, or... Yeah, you bunch of twonks. Mm. A pair. A pair of twonks, surely. A pair of twonks. Well, yeah, it's a very small bunch, isn't it? Moving on to Super Wanks. Yes. We only have one Super Wanks this week, which really? is Sussex View. Sussex View. Thank you, Sussex View, uh, for your contribution via the Super Wanks. Uh, I think you just said thanks. Thanks for the Wanks. Thanks for the Wanks. Special mention, Tim from Sheffield, who uh, has written me yet another letter. Thank you very much, Tim. And who does, I can confirm, use a word processor. He migrated from typewriting, mechanical typewriting through electric typewriting through electrical word processors to your standard PC word processing software. Good to know. And he likes to use the courier font, as we know. Uh, really? You did say, Tim, that uh, I would perhaps missed you off on a couple of shout-outs. Uh, my apologies for that. I can confirm I did get your letters, the ones you mentioned. If I failed to mention you, uh, in a shout-out video, then that's just down to my ineptitude. I'm apologies for that. So these coffee shout-out things, I'm normally scrabbling about at the last minute going, shit, shit, I've got to collate together who's who's done it and via what platform or what method. And there, there is always a risk that I'm going to leave someone out. I try not to, but... Uh, sorry, Tim, your, your letter must have just slipped there. I did get you one about the... Um, with the attach, attachment about the mega stuff. Uh, uh, following old geezer's gear, yes. Was it no Robin stuff? That's it. I did get that one, so thank you for that. Now, one other thing to mention, and this came around very late last night. Dan the Man at DMH Electrical has posted this on Insta Twat. We fit a zappy onto a while ago. Now, the garage was fed from a 6mm and a 32 amp RCBO. So I also fit a monitor on that garage feed for 30 amps. So I know that this 32 amp RCBO has never had more than 30 amps to it. Look at it. On both sides. I've now done the same house, a 40 amp RCBO has stopped latching. Won't stay up. With no load connected to it, I can actually take the RCBO out the board and it still won't latch. Actually, the same as this one, funny enough. Maybe we should stick to Hager, or do CP fuse box, or Schneider, or Wilex, or any of the other big brands that you can readily buy off the shelves. Well, that was very interesting, wasn't it? <coughs> <coughs> very interesting. And that came in uh, very late last night. And I'm sorry, Dan, that uh, you've had this experience. Obviously, that's quite a catastrophic failure of that device and yes. ought not to have happened. And Dan makes the point that perhaps you should stick to brands you know and recognise. Yes. 
Well, that's always the risk, isn't it, of using it something that's not so familiar to the market. And it's not like SBS are new. I mean, CP Fusebox has only been around since, what, 2018 or something, yeah. uh, which is a brand that he mentions. Uh, SBS has been around for over 10 years. Yeah. Obviously, that should not have happened, and that is rather worrying. Cause we're not sponsored or anything by SBS, but we, no. we have been shown to put their gear in. Uh, including in this video where we've shown their gear in use, and, it's, and, and we we use it. It's nice, nice gear, but that needs to be. It's not bitting us on the arse. Yeah. A couple of things to say about that. First of all, that's not the first time I've seen thermal damage to a protective device. Yeah. Right, it's the first time I've seen it on a SBS protective device, but of course, you know, we we haven't fitted millions of them. No. But it's not the first time I've seen a protective device that suffered that kind of damage. That kind of damage is. I would say from it running over its limit, not enough to trip, because we know that a, a breaker will trip three to five times its, its current rating, yeah. but it ought to handle 30, if it's rated at 32 amps, it ought to handle 32 amps as its design current without any effects like that. Yeah. I reckon that's, that device has been running, well, presumably, hot, over 32 <laughs> amps, but not enough for it to trip, yeah, but enough for it to be thermally damaged, but it still shouldn't have happened. However, I have seen that happen to other makes, other models, and it's a real pisser because I had such examples hanging around the office, and about three or four months ago, I had a big office clear out, and I had a bunch of faulty LED lights, RCDs, and MCBs exhibiting different kinds of damage that I always intended to make videos about and never got around to and thought, well, if it hasn't happened in the last three years, it's not going to happen in any time soon, and I binned it all which is a shame because I can't remember what, that, what device brands I had that exhibited similar experiences. Also, I, I, to say on SBS's behalf, and again, I'm no spokesman for them, I'm not paid no. by them or anything, they have come back, because I've, I've shared that with them, and said, what do you think about this? They have come back saying they do have a very low failure rate, and they do examine any failures that have been returned to them. We've not experienced any failures, no. uh, but also, I would say that's Dan didn't install that SBS board. That was a, a board that was installed, we think, in 2018 using Type yeah. AC devices. It's all been Type A since we've been buying them. Not that that's any excuse for any kind of problem, but yeah. it does it, it does mean that we don't know the full history of that device. We don't know for sure. I don't think, uh, from what I've spoken with Dan about, that. It was definitely the car charger that's caused that damage, or whether that thermal damage actually occurred some time ago, and it's just been sat there ever since. Dan only noticed it because he, he went to change another device in that board, and that's where he spotted it wasn't working. Obviously, he's had a fault as well, he says, with a 40 amp device that's unrelated to this thermal damage, it seems. But yeah. um, but it showed no outgoing signs from the front of that thermal damage. It was something that you only saw from the side once you took the neighbouring device out, which is what seems to have happened here. So we don't know the history of that device. Maybe it came from another job where it had suffered some kind of misfortune or maybe it's happened on that site before the car charger went in. Maybe it happened after the car charger went in. It shouldn't have happened, whatever happened. No. Unless it's some kind of external influence that's, that's caused that damage. I haven't seen it internally. I don't know if, you know, if it's been exposed to something on its sides. Well, we don't know. We don't it's, know. Yeah. We don't. But I've got to say that just in terms of balance uh, because obviously you know that's out there and there will be people thinking oh well is this stuff dodgy because David and Nigel are pushing that stuff we're not pushing it you know, yeah. we're not pushing it because we're incentivized to do so just because you know for what's on the market we like it and so far it hasn't bitten us on the arse maybe it will but you can say that about any other make you could say yeah. that about CP Fusebox who are new to mar new to the game relatively speaking they've only been around for a few years our problem's going to come across yeah but you can say about old hands as well we've seen product recalls from the likes of mk in the past yeah sbs certainly said that there's been no overarching issue or product recall from their stuff so you know we i'm still going to carry on using them with confidence until something comes along that says we ought to do with advice yeah it's a very boring note to end the video on isn't it Definitely, I'm um, bored. I think my, my cigar's going out as well. I've been too too much talking and not enough... Too much yak and not enough suck. Not enough suck. As is usual for this kind of thing. So, 
Thank you for your contribution. Thank you for watching the nonsense. I'm sorry that this video was not all that. No. A lot of it was filmed in the dark, which is a problem as well. <laughs> but uh, yes, we will be doing something on um, on energy costs. Quite yes, soon. that was very exciting. Maybe. I don't know. Sure. I'm on board now. That is a fucking nice coffee. It is a nice cup of coffee. Well, thank you for watching and uh, catch you on the next one. See ya.